Well, once again, welcome to Heartbeat Christian Academy. And you are enrolled in Computer Essentials or you're browsing Computer Essentials, but you are working on Computer Essentials. And I trust that you've learned something thus far. And we've been talking about memory. Before we get there, just let me share my contact details with you. There's the contact details if you need the notes or you want to contact us. You've got both the email and the cell number there. We also have a beautiful library with a lot of material if you need some material to read or listen to or watch and then there's the banking details well we're making these courses freely available and we just ask that those who can partner with us and that's why we're always giving the banking details right there on the screen you can always pause and write it down if you want to so computer essentials and i hope that you've learned something i've had some good feedback through the years through the past actually 15 years that we've been doing this course we've had some very good feedback people that have said you know what this course actually opened up my eyes and i no longer have a digital apprehension and digital fear and that is what we're trying to do we're trying to bridge the digital gap so that you will feel comfortable with technology and when people talk about ram and they talk about cpu and they talk about gigabytes and they talk about megahertz and they use the terminology that you won't feel that they're speaking french or another language but that you will be comfortable with that language and at least understand the basics that's what it's about we're not going to get technical we're not going to turn you into an it technician there are other courses for that this course is going to teach you the basics and once you know this, you're going to feel much, much more confident in everything that you do. Let's just have a look here, uh, just as an overview. We did section one. We were talking about some general concepts. And then we were looking at section two, where we uh, spoke about hardware. We spoke about the central processing unit. And then we entered into section three, where we started looking at storage. And uh, we started looking at storage devices and then typical of types of memory and today we're going to be looking at lesson 11 which talks about measuring memory so i'm going to be talking about that and there's similarities between that and the storage devices because we're using the same units as far as measuring is concerned uh, you will still see we still have to talk about software so we'll be getting a bit into software and talking a bit about the operating system and we will also be talking about networking a bit so that you have basic concepts of networking and then uh, the use of IT in everyday life, health and safety, and then security. So we've still got quite a way to go. We've, we have to go up to lesson 33, which is the revision uh, lesson. But uh, today we are talking about measuring, uh, measuring your RAM, your random access memory. So how do you measure RAM? I mean, if you look at a RAM chip, uh, which is here, how what what would be important well there's only two things that we have to that, that we have to measure as far as ram is concerned if we're looking at this ram module uh, we are seeing all the chips on here and we have to ask ourselves how much can this memory module store how much memory can it store remember it's volatile memory in other words it's not permanent storage but how much can it store that is what we need to know and then also when it stores when the computer is storing uh, files in this memory how fast does that happen so we need to know the size and the speed that's all now for the basic computer shopper uh, i mean <laughs> i've sold computers for many years i think about 18 years this year and i've never had a guy come up to me uh, or can i say very seldom i've had a guy come up to me and, and ask me about ram speed uh, so most people understand that RAM has a size and they know that, you know, they have to consider the size of the RAM because they know that when you're running Windows and say, for instance, you're running Windows 10 or you're running Windows 7 or you're running Windows XP or Windows 98, every operating system comes with RAM requirements. When you're looking at games and you're buying a game, you will turn the game around and look at the back of the game. You will see it has a CPU, a central processing unit requirement. It normally has a, 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 a graphics card requirement. So it will tell you what GPU to buy, what graphics card to buy. And then it, was, it will also tell you how much RAM that needs. And it's the same with applications, even like uh, drawing applications like Coral Draw, Photoshop, 
uh, a, lo a lot of times point of sale applications all of them will say we need this amount of random access memory and we must keep in mind that the operating system uses ram we will talk about uh, a lot of these issues in under computer performance but we but what we also must understand these days is that other applications like google drive dropbox uh, chrome they all use certain amounts of random access memory so what you will find is that one of the greatest problems today in the computer industry is users are running out of ram they don't have enough random access memory and what happens is as soon as the operating system uh, determines that it does not have enough ram to to run the applications it will go to the hard drive and actually go and page some memory there uh, uh, and that will then slow down the computer slightly or, or uh, can be uh, quite drastically depending on on what you are opening up so you need to understand that when you're buying a computer you are looking at the cpu yes the central processing unit you are looking at the hard drive size and the hard drive type is it a normal drive or is it a ssd drive and then you're looking at the ram the random access memory how much ram you can actually install when you buy it and is it upgradable later because that's also important a lot of people forget about that side of it that you need to actually look at it can this motherboard uh, or this computer if it's a if it's a laptop uh, there are normally quite a bit of limitations as far as that is concerned in fact some laptops have been manufactured now that we we actually as as installers and as repairers we saw this uh, that those laptops have no ram slots they've actually removed the ram slots and uh, that means that you cannot upgrade the random access memory so what you get from the factories is what you get that is the one problem the other problem is that there is a potential of ram going faulty uh, ram has gone faulty over the years it's not something that that goes faulty often but faulty ram chips are uh, i wouldn't say common but they do occur and i was just asking myself the question looking at these main boards you know taking them out of the laptops looking at them and saying okay so what happens when the ram on the board goes faulty you actually throw away the computer so it's important that when you're buying a laptop uh, when you're buying a desktop that you consider what are you going to be doing in the long term with the unit for instance i'm building a computer now for somebody that's got the capacity it's got a full ATX motherboard so it's got a lot of capacity a lot of RAM slots a lot of expansion slots your PCI and PCI Express slots that you normally use to install modems and and uh, graphics cards and stuff like that and it supports uh, the the Intel CPU range from the dual core CPU or the Celeron CPU dual core CPU i3 i5 and i7 so this customer is now buying the unit as it is with the potential of expanding and uh, because they want to expand they want to run multiple monitors on the unit so they're buying it with that in mind so keep that in mind when you're buying computers i always try and give you a bit of advice in computer essentials because i want you to be informed and i want you to make intelligent choices when it comes to your it so here we are computer essentials and we are talking about measuring memory i gave you a bit of an overview just there just an overview that is what a ram chip looks like again and the, those are the different components that are on the print, printed circuit board um, there is your ram uh, modules there and uh, you can also see there's the module key uh, the fingers or the gold fingers edge contactors that that connect uh, to the main board of a computer and uh, that is what we uh, what i also showed you in the previous lecture was this where we have some of the ram uh, the pins uh, which is the size of the ram and then i also put in there the ram speeds so you can see there and um, that is the speed that the ram works at but let's look at the size and we've looked at this before under hard drive storage it's exactly the same one bit is the smallest amount of information that can hold either a one or a zero uh, talking about binary we're not going to talk about that because it's a plus curriculum but just know that one bit and there's there's eight eight bits in a byte okay <laughs> not a byte of food but a byte of computer storage and then we've got it down here to look at, at, at kilobyte and bytes so it's 1024 bytes 
in a kilobyte. Then there's 1024K in a megabyte. And then there's 1024 megabytes in a gigabyte. And then there's one terabyte or 1024 gigabyte in a terabyte. And currently we have uh, RAM chips that are about four gig, uh, uh, eight gig. So they run in configurations. They started with two gig, four gig, eight gig, 16 gig. And um, I know that, that the 32 gig memory chips have also come out. The average desktop computer will come out for, of the factory, the pre bolts will come out with about four gigs at the store at the recording of this information so just a, a bit of recap for yourself if you want to read that slide you can pause and read it but it's just talking about random access memory is integrated circuit chip made of millions of transistors and capacitors you've seen that there uh, and it talks about uh, that ram is volatile meaning that data is, is only held until the power is cut as soon as the power is out you know the ram uh, loses its storage that is just the function of ram then we talk about ram frequency uh, which we can refer to as speed and that's measured in megahertz usually uh, immediately followed by the ddr version for example 8 gig ddr4 that's the fourth release of ddr memory uh, 2400 ram is running at a frequency of 2000 400 megahertz so that is um, that is the speed of it and it's already much much faster i mean as you can see um, here uh, and we looked back at the previous slide but i, I remember still 533 uh, i still remember 533 and, and slower memory than that i mean here we've got 400 megahertz so uh, the memory is slower in its operation and that can uh, you know uh, be a performance improvement if your RAM is faster. So the two things that you don't want, and I must be honest with you, if I if I really say what I think, yeah, and I mean, uh, people might not agree with me, but for me, the RAM speed, uh, it's not something that I've really noticed a, a great uh, performance improvement. The, the main thing is the RAM quantity. The, I've seen where, where pieces have bottlenecked, where people have loaded a lot of software on their computers and every software comes up in the startup menu and requires a, a certain amount of RAM. And I've seen users literally run out of RAM, so I've seen that. But the speed of the RAM, yes, obviously uh, tweaking all your components is always a good thing because there's a performance improvement, but there's certain performance improvements that you will see straight away. You will notice it. Uh, I've had computers so slow, like laptops, extremely slow. And then I, and I see, oh, it's got two gigs memory. It's running two gig memory with uh, Windows 10. And it's running at 95% memory without the user opening any application. So then we put an additional two gig memory in and all of a sudden the bottleneck is open. And we'll talk about performance in the next le lecture, but I want to stress to you the two measurements. The two things we're going to measure in, the, in this course uh, and in this module is speed, clock speed of the RAM measured in megahertz and then also the, the size of it. And it's the same, the size is the same like you had uh, and like I say, we are talking about gigs of RAM now at this stage. So we're talking about one gig, two gig. We don't say one or two, four megabytes. Now we say one gig, two gig, three gig, four gig. And uh, normally they run in configuration of two gig chips. Uh, one gig chips were available, uh, but currently uh, a lot of the suppliers are only selling the two gig chips. Uh, the problem sometimes, and I just want to mention that with laptops is you might buy a laptop that has four gigs memory but if it only has one memory slot that means that you will have to remove the four gig if you wanted to do an upgrade and then and then actually purchase an eight gig uh, and the eight gig memory uh, you know it, it will obviously be double the price so keep that in mind when you are purchasing your computers and your desktops your laptops, just keep in mind the amount of random access memory and go and do a study on what software you're going to be running. Uh, and uh, like I said, the speed, 
really when when uh, when somebody builds a, a pc for high performance work maybe graphics design video editing they will say okay i want to know what cpu do i have how many cores does the cpu have how fast does the cpu run uh, how many ram slots do i have uh, what is the maximum ram that the board can run what is the ram speed and also what is the front side bus of the board the the, the speed that the components can communicate with one other with one another on the board so there's a there's a lot of things that when it comes to performance that you will consider but for this lecture all you need to know is that uh, ram is measured in gig one gig two gig three gig four gig ram and then also you need to know about the the speed of the ram the clock speed of the ram and that's basically it for this lecture uh, there's a lot of other things that i've just written down here faster ram speeds allow your processor to access the data stored on the hard drive quicker giving you giving your system a boost in uh, processor performance and like i say a lot of times you can't see that with a naked eye but it is a fact it is measurable uh, with software uh, but you don't always see that performance improvement so that concludes uh, this lesson and uh, in the next lesson we're actually going to go get into the performance issues and uh, if, so if you've got a slow computer and you are um, you know you are so frustrated with your computer then definitely tune in for lesson 12. lesson 12 is computer performance i'll see you in lesson 12.